Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. And you may be slightly taken aback by today's topic, maybe a little bit confused. Um, and I am merely giving an alternative idea, a discussion. I would love to hear your opinion down in the comment section below. So feel free to comment as you are watching today's video. And if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, uh, maybe I'm going far out of left field on this one, but maybe you kind of understand where I'm getting at when I'm talking about today's topic. And first and foremost, I want to state at the beginning of this video, I don't think that telling your customers to trim their wicks in between every burn is a bad thing, is incorrect, is wrong. I don't think that at all. And I don't think that the standard instructions for candle care at the bottom of the warning label is incorrect either. I'm merely pondering that potentially candle care instructions are not a one size fits all for every single candle out there. Candle making at its core is a scientific experiment. And much like baking cookies, for instance, that is also a scientific experiment. But when it comes to baking cookies, it's different than how we make candles and create our instructions or our candle care versus how bakers create their recipe and then create their directions on how to bake those cookies. I know it's different, but let me draw this comparison and see if you kind of get where I'm coming from. So when it comes to baking, there's a thousand different combinations out there of different ingredients that you can put together and combine to yield a different result with whatever cookie type you're trying to make. But the difference with that is that the recipe itself dictates what the directions or the cookie care instructions, if you will, on how to make the cookie is going to be. You don't see the baking community with cookies have to follow that you have to bake it at 350 for 10 minutes and yield this kind of result. And then they're trying to mold that recipe to fit those directions. There are also so many different varying factors that could get in the way on how that cookie actually performs or bakes for the person following the recipe. I'm sure you've seen on a bunch of different blogs out there that people will comment saying, hey, my cookies didn't spread out or my cookie spread out too much or hey, this happened to my cookie or what happened here, it was too dry or it was like this or whatever it was. And th there's just so many different things that can come into play on how that is going to affect that end result of that cookie. And it may not be the perfect way that that baker created that recipe because let's say you uh, swapped out uh, butter for coconut oil, or let's say you live in a higher humidity area or a higher altitude, um, or you baked it on you know a nonstick cookie sheet. So really you needed to turn the temperature down. There's just so many different things that come into play. Um, maybe it's super, super hot outside and that's increasing the heat inside your house, which could increase, um, you know, also the humidity and also the temperature um, and just affect overall the way that the cookie turns out. I think in a lot of ways, this is very similar to candle making. Now I understand that the person themselves is not creating the candle, they're just burning the candle. But there are so many different factors that come into play when it comes to the end consumer burning your candle, where they're located, if there's any drafts in the air, if it's humid, um, if they trim the wicks too short, if they blow out the candle too early. There are so many different things that come into play that we have no control over as candle makers. So I feel like having this very concrete um, candle care directions, if you will, um, doesn't apply to every single situation. Now, I do admit that it probably applies to most candle consumers out there because a lot of times actually people are burning their candles probably too long than too short but there are people that you know potentially could blow out the candle after 45 minutes or an hour and that may possibly lead the candle to tunneling um, if they are trimming the wicks before that next burn. 
Editing Erica here. So as I was editing this video, I realized that I didn't acknowledge anything about how I understand there's a difference between baking cookies and burning candles in terms of the safety aspect. And that's why we have to adhere to certain guidelines and make sure that, you know, the candles are burning properly and safely. So I completely understand that. I also understand that, you know, letting customers know that they need to trim their wicks is extremely important. And I am all for educating customers on trimming their wicks. It's still something obviously that we do. I just do it slightly differently um, to adhere more towards our candles to ensure that they're not going to tunnel on the customer and especially depending on how they're burning them. So my whole thought process with this video is maybe it's not a one size fits all. It's kind of how I feel about candle wicks needing to start the length at one quarter of an inch. Our candle wicks actually start longer than that, more towards like about a centimeter long. And again, that's something else that we've adjusted kind of slightly and gone off of the beaten path, if you will, of like the concrete instructions and trying to fit our molds, our candle to the mold of, you know, exactly perfectly how you're supposed to make a candle. So this is kind of where I'm at now when it comes to the candle care instructions for my personal candles. I decided to change up the verbiage a little bit with the candle care instructions um, to tailor a little bit more towards how I know that my candles perform because we primarily have always used double wicked vessels and those tend to burn hotter when you have two wicks in a jar than when you have just one wick, depending. But the way that we have kind of formulated it is that I had wanted to to create a slower burning double wicked candle as much as I possibly can. And that requires, I think, a little bit different when it comes to the candle care instructions. So this is how I changed it up. So what I per put first and foremost on the candle care instructions is allow the candle to burn for a full four hours during the first burn. I feel like this is really important to state because it's not something that I had told my customers previously. And a lot of times when I would have people reach out saying that my candle tunneled or if it was, or it was having trouble performing in some way, um, I would ask them how long they burned it for and it was usually for between two and three hours. So letting it burn that full four hours really helps to encourage to almost reach that full melt, which is how I design the candles to perform, which again helps slow down that burn as the candle burns lower. So the way that I designed it is for the first burn in those first four hours to actually not reach full melt. Um, again, to help slow down the burn because it will catch up over time. Um, and that's just, you know, how I had learned to design it and how I kind of adjusted it over time. So allow the candle to burn for a full four hours during the first burn. I say the melt pool of the candle may not reach all edges of the jar until the second or third burn. This is normal and will help the candle burn slower and extend the life of your candle. I also say trim the carbon buildup off your wicks before each new burn as needed. I added in as needed. And I say trimming the wicks may not be needed until the third burn as every candle burns slightly different. If at any point you notice high flames or soot and smoke emitting from your candle, blow it out, trim the wicks and relight. I feel like this is a kind of concise and condensed way to let the customer know, hey, this is what you should be looking for. And if you see these things, blow out your candle, trim the wicks, it's definitely needed at that time, just so they have a little bit more of an idea of what to be looking for when it comes to burning the candle. I also say, you know, don't leave your candle burning for longer than four hours at a time. And I also threw in the candle jar will be hot to the touch. Don't move the candle while it is lit or within one hour after extinguishing the flames. I kind of I didn't make that up, but I kind of just threw that in there as just kind of like a common thing. Hey, don't touch the jar. It's it's a hot, you know, it's been lit with fire, so don't touch it. Um, and then I also put keep away from children's pet children's children, pets, drafts, flammable objects, and surfaces. So this is how I've adjusted my candle care advice to kind of fit our candles. Um, and uh, so far, I feel like we haven't had anybody reach out over any issues with the candles since we've been sending this out. Um, I'm really hoping that this gives a little bit more clarity to 
our candles and how to burn them without overwhelming the customer with too much information that they're just not going to understand. Um, so that is my discussion for today's video. I know it's kind of different and weird um, and something that, you know, not a lot of, uh, you know, people in the candle community, I don't think I've heard anybody talk about this before. Um, so again, this may be like totally way out of left field, but you can let me know. Um, but with that, uh, I am going to end today's video right here. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate you giving this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you in my next video. There are so many different varying factors and how much of each of those ingredients is that ingredients, ingredients, ingredients. I said ingredients. So candle making is a science. We know that there are tons of different ingredients. Ingredients. Why do I keep saying that? It's ingredients. Ingredient. Ingredients. That is the plural of ingredient. Why am I having such a hard time with this word? So when it comes to making cookies, there's a bunch of different ingredients that you can put together. I did it again. Ingredients ingredients is that's that's literally putting two s's that's not right <laughs> so with baking cookies you know there's a bunch of different ingredients i can't not do it <laughs> ingredients ingredients ingredient one ingredient two ingredients there's not ingredients <laughs> so when it comes to baking cookies you know there's a bunch of different ingredients that <laughs> so when it comes to baking <laughs> I'm just gonna say things. <laughs>